Um, yeah, we're connecting together some nickel metal hydrate modules here to power the coil for this take on the pot clamp experiment. And uh, I think Jeremy got into this earlier, that there's different types of pot clamp experiments. Um, there's also different like levels of you know of things that you can add to this experiment, such as putting it all in a vacuum. That we weren't able to do yet. It is uh, pretty difficult to set up something like that. Um, but we do have it inside of a coil and we are impulsing it with uh, a large amount of current rather than a super high voltage. So this is 613 joules of energy uh, going into um, the superconductors via a thyrotron. Get rid of that manual. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> Does it look all right? Can you see that? Also, you want to talk a little bit about your vacuum tube again? Oh, so this is the um, Thyrotron that came out of the... Uh, um, linear. Yeah, the Berkeley Labs Linear Accelerator. So this actually came from Berkeley. And they took apart the accelerator and sold it on eBay. And I actually built this, um, this whole setup in order to power it. Um, this entire device is going to be floating at around 35,000 volts. So we have a high voltage Faraday cage here. And there's all different types of uh, electronics needed to power the tube. Uh, you have to give it some uh, a static voltage of 6.3 volts, and then you have to apply a high voltage grid that's all controlled via a fiber, uh, basically a light sensor over there. So we're going to shoot a laser through the side in order to trigger it. It's going to be a pretty cool experiment, and we hope to see the results in a pan on the floor. Jeremiah, uh, do you want to show us what you worked on today, this thing right here? Yeah, inside there. We've got a brass bolt, taper head, Phillips soldered to a copper disc that's one millimeter thick as wide as the YBCO discs which are one inch discs and uh, they are bonded at three points so we have a proprietary bonding agent combined with CCTO uh, calcium copper uh, t titanium oxide I think and uh, nickel silver powder and then we have just a plain PBO in the middle and on the other side we have a uh, mixture of the uh, PV PBO and a copper powder and the reason why we're putting the metal powders in this material is the PBO is actually not very conductive so by cramming them full of these metal powders and sandwiching these plates on the ends of the YBCO we're uh, able to get some connection to the surfaces of the YBCO which are ceramic and very very hard to bond to and so the other side is just a uh, duplication of the first side except for the bonding agents between them and then that's sitting inside of this little chamber here so I'll pick that up for a moment to kind of you what's going on here Careful with it. so earlier uh, your cameraman right now mr. alien scientist cut out these two wood discs for us and uh, we screwed them together with eight standard household screws to create a nice bobbin which we won by hand this is 13.5 gauge uh, very heavy build insulation copper wire and inside of the center is a piece of PVC to insulate the voltage and then that assembly you can see the top of the bolt there top of the bolt is one of those brass bolts shown in this image here. and another one sticks out the bottom that's our other terminal and so that makes up the load that we're going to discharge the thyrotron with through this uh, through the output of this capacitor and just cram as much current in here as we possibly can at superconducting temperatures now we have to have the magnet on for the time that it's going in transition our superconductor through its phase of not superconducting to fully superconducting so that it locks in the field created by this electromagnet and that's what those batteries are for. They're going to supply somewhere around 30 amps or so into this coil for about one minute during that transition phase to lock the field in. Sweet! These uh, batteries by the way are straight out of our scrap pile. And what are we using to uh, take measurements? Uh, where are we going to just going to look for observable effects? Any yeah, kind of observable there, effect yeah. at this point, and then before yeah. we set up uh, anything to take data? Right, because this is a, it's such a it's such a fringe type of experiment, and there's so little known about exactly what makes it work and what doesn't. Now, multiple laboratories have attempted to replicate this work and have failed for one reason or another. And so, uh, seemingly, the only people that can get this to work are the inventors themselves, that be Poor and Pogkinoff. So this is more of like a uh, an unruly combination between Pohr and Pogkinoff because we're not using Pohr's proprietary mixture of superconductors and Josephson junctions. We're using more of a uh, Pogkinoff style mixture where we have two different superconductors where Josephson junctions are formed between each uh, plate and the connection between the two superconductors. And also like Pogkinoff we're using a slightly higher voltage, 35,000 volts in this case, instead of Pohr's much lower 9,000 or so. Uh, so 
we're going more on the uh, high voltage side because we have a thyrotron which has given us that voltage rating and because we're going to get a little more current through this thing at a higher voltage. Is, um, Bill, we're trying to put together the um, Poklonoff demonstration and we are literally minutes away from doing this. Yeah, Poklonoff poor. It's hard to yeah. call it either way. I'm not really sure what we're going to call this, but it, it is what it is. You'll see all the components and you call it, what's well, today's date? January 6th. It's a January 6th, 2021 experiment. Um, Jeremiah, you ready? We're going to get some high voltage armed up here in just a moment. How about I test the uh, electromagnet first? I would highly recommend testing your circuit first. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it is too. Here we go. Try again. <laughs> so you can you can see the field is going through there. We're pulling about 35, 36 amps right now, which is not bad. That should create a, su a sufficient field to How polarize. How many is it? I have literally no idea. As many as I could put on there by hand until I got... Uh, I ran out of space. <laughs> Pretty okay. much. So it is what it is. Now all we gotta do is put in the uh, liquid nitrogen and get the high voltage going. So we need to move this to the center of the room. So all right. Just give me a little space. We just want to confirm that we really measured and 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 actually you know definitively measure it. So uh, they they you probably weren't actually they probably were were actually made um, several times before, uh, that, but 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 we actually never detected them or actually measured them uh, with a measurement until '95. I like a thermos full of liquid nitrogen in the morning. Because now we're able to we were able to liquid nitrogen. It's almost full. A lot of these condensed matter states. Much That's gonna be enough for the entire night. Try now. Yeah, that's better. Okay. That's your switch to turn it on and off, right? Yeah. yeah. Just shine this light. I can make it a little bit more sensitive because right now we have all this light coming in. From right. So what is it with these materials? Off. Like, so, so, so like there's different densities, and then, then yeah. you know, the air density of water is different than air. And the density of the material also is, is you know, changes the speed of light of them. All right, they, we're gonna run it. All right, all right, we're gonna run this. Are you guys ready? Bust out the liquid nitrogen. Let's get ready. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. That thing's on top. They are wearing safety glasses off camera, just so you know. We're gonna put those on later. So he's pouring that right into the PVC pipe. It's going to get right down inside there and uh, cool down that superconductor to we our do have rainbow safety critical glasses. temperature once it hits that critical point. I guess I was lucky my uh, chamber has not been tested yet, but it apparently is holding the liquid nitrogen in and out. Um, Power on the electromagnet. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right, now let's fire a friggin' blast through that thing and step back. Everyone step back, let's fire something through. We have to wait, I'm just gonna sit here and watch it to see if it uh, if it leaks out or if it actually... You uh, can see it coming out the bottom a little bit here. I'm not sure if that's coming out the bottom. Or... Yeah, it might be, I don't know where it is coming, but I can well, see it. Well, it is, it is, uh, I feel it. A little bit is coming out the bottom. Okay. It is. Well, let's just do it. No, we still have to cool it down, it's still not superconducting. We're losing it. Okay, so just get, get on the uh, get on the high voltage. The high voltage ready. And we'll do it. Man, just pull it up all the way. Yeah, look, we're, we're seeing it in the tray. We're losing it now. Now it's actually opened itself up. I hope this is enough. Okay, we're generating heat here from the coil, so we've got to really do this fast. Well, as soon yeah. as that, it's got to stop bubbling, otherwise we know we haven't hit superconductivity. Uh, we're getting there. Definitely getting there, but I don't think it'll stop bubbling because we're generating well, heat. It should be not bubbling from the inside. Okay. I don't know how we're going to tell if it It looks like it's back. bubbling from the outside. I, I think yeah. it's ready. Just oh. go. Just go. Just power it up. Okay. It's fine. Stand by. Wait, wait, wait. Fill it up and then all clear. All right, we got to wait for that. That liquid's all moving on the bottom now. Yeah, we got to we gotta stop that. We got to turn off the light over here. 
something under it to catch that. That's okay. It's still got enough in it to actually go through the process. That's fine. The smoke, the smoke might be blowing away too. That could be kind of cool, Jeremy. You have to get the. Um, Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the catching that. Just let. I mean, the smoke on the tray there may actually be useful to analyze whether it's working yeah, or not. Okay. So let's just zoom back so we can see both. You can't be the, you no, can't no, be no, anywhere you near that. Yeah, you have to I weigh see that. Both. This is a high power pulse discharge. Oh, yeah, you don't yeah. want that camera anywhere. No. Okay, yeah, we yeah. have. We're we're way Barry. We're still good. Don't touch okay. Like that. All right. Should, we're should watching. A more. Just a little more. Just a little more, and then we're gonna fire it. We're gonna see if we get any effect on down there. Okay, it's filled up. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Stand by. We're gonna start out at. A little bit lower voltage, we're going to go to about 5, 6 kV. One second, one second, let me get, let me get a close up on this. Stand right by, here. give it a charging current. Oh wow, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of power. Wow, I can see that, that's cold. That's 10 kV. <laughs> and stand by, we're going to try to trigger it. This is at only 10 kV. Alright, safety glasses on. Ready? Ooh. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said safety glasses on. Powering yeah. down. <laughs> we may have just blown our top plate off. We're gonna find out in just a second. Woo. Oh my God. Okay. Was there any uh, shake though on the water before the um, before the shake of the? I didn't even happened? see, man. Oh, I just... we shattered our whole container. <laughs> I jumped a mile. Oh we shattered that Oh my God! Look hole. at that. The container just fell apart. Yeah, Please tell me you were seeing the water on the camera feed though, because I wasn't able to look at that. So we, uh, don't we know could. We got it on the camera feed. Wait, wait, is this